worship service this morning. Uh, friends from a little, a little far west of here, out at Eldred. Eldred, they come to visit with us and are camping here. And uh, so are we. And again, we just uh, thank you for allowing us to be a part of what's happening here with your campground. You know, it's very few anymore where campgrounds allow worship services at their facilities. It seems as though God has become a you know, thing of the past. But that's not the case with the folks who have gathered here this morning because we come to worship and to praise and to give glory and honor to our soon coming King and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we come to you this morning. We sense and know that your presence is real in our hearts. And Lord, we would ask that you would move mightily among the folks who are here today. That, Lord, we would just know that your presence is real. May something that is said or sung strike a chord in our hearts that we would draw nearer to you and, Lord, to know you in a more intimate, closeness way. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to deliver your spoken word to those individuals who are here. And we thank and we would ask that you would bless this campground, its ownership, and as they go forward with serving others who come to enjoy your great outdoors. Lord, we thank you for the, the warmer weather and, Lord, the, for the reminder that fall is coming. But most of all, Lord, we thank you because you have control of all of it. None of it is manifested that you don't know about. And, Lord, we thank you for that great knowledge that you have. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And he all says, Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, the uh, Matthew 11 this morning. And we're going to be reading two verses. Uh, some of those, those that know me will say, well, gee, only two verses, you know. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's not too bad. I could still, I could have just picked one and we could have had quite a, uh, a conversation or a message on that. So uh, feel free to take notes if you want to, and if you have any questions concerning the message, uh, I'll be glad to share it with you other in person uh, after the, the service. And uh, it's not my words, it's God's word. And if something strikes a chord with you that you find objectionable to, I'll address it with you, but you don't have to take it up with the author. That's where the, the answer lies. So the two... Verses we're reading this morning come from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. And it says, Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. For you shall find rest. For your souls. In this particular passage of scripture, we see Jesus is the one that is speaking to his disciples. This is young in his ministry in and about the, the first year, and he's developing rapport with the people around him. And he says to them, you know, come on to me. In other words, he's saying, come to me. You know, Jesus is proclaiming that he is the giver of salvation. Come on to me, all you who are who are who labor and are heavy laden. This weekend is what? Labor Day. Labor Day. You know, as a nationwide day of, the, of extension of, of the, the weekend, they celebrate, we celebrate, that's the reason we're here. Because we don't have to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I see somebody saying, yeah, you don't have to work today. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> but yet there's, there was a time when even not too long ago that if you didn't have your gas, your bread and milk on Saturday night, you didn't get it till Monday morning. Mm -hmm. and places were closed. You know, there was no uh, convenience stores or Walmarts. And even to the point where, you know, if you, restaurants that were open were on Main
main thoroughfares, you know, like the, the interstates and places like that, where you know the travelers would stop for something to eat. You know, restaurants weren't open. You know, you went home and you sat around the kitchen table. You had you had chicken, fried potatoes. Or excuse me, chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, and applesauce. <laughs> What's that? Don't forget the gravy. Oh, the gravy, absolutely <laughs> gravy. Yeah. But uh, you know, you sat around the table and you joined as a family and you had a meal. But here, you know, where it says labor, and all those who labor. Now we we work, and I'm glad that there is people that work on Sunday on the Lord's Day. I'm working today, you know, though I thoroughly enjoy what I do, and. I'm glad that there's people in the penitentiary who <laughs> keep them people who were, you know, locked up. And they're there to keep them locked up. The same way with our hospital staff, the RNs and the doctors and, and all of those who take care of individuals in a time of an emergency. The police departments, the mm. sheriff's department, you know, Can't those individuals who are what? there Can't keeping us safe, just yes. waiting. The we, campground owner. That? The campground owner. The campground owner, too. You know, we don't have electricity for the water shut off. I remember one time your pump went down, didn't it? Yeah. It didn't have for the whole campground. The campground owner to handle those, what seemed like a, a inconvenience for us, you know, becomes, can become a major happening. Now let's not forget our men and women in uniform who are standing guard mm -hmm. and keeping us free. Now that's important. They're working Sundays because evil knows no holiday. So, well, and by that I mean, you know, individuals with nefarious ideas, you know, and some of the other things that take place, robberies and riots and all of that stuff. And I'm glad there is people that work on Sundays. But Jesus is here saying, come unto me, you all you who are heavy, who labor and are heavily burdened. You know, sometimes, if you have a job, you know, you, you want to provide for your family, you want to, uh, you know, make a living, pay for your toys, you know, <laughs> and all your, all your stuff, you want, you want to be able to afford that. Or sometimes... Maybe some of us know individuals who become overwhelmed with acquiring stuff and, you know, who will leave the kitchen table, the supper table, just to go make a dollar somewhere. You know. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's telling these individuals who were there that day listening to him deliver this great invitation. And he's telling us today that those who labor who, and are heavy burdened, He's saying, you cannot work your way to heaven. No amount of, of good deeds, no amount of church attendance, no amount of, you know, following in that particular time, following the law of Moses, you know, doing the sacrifices, going to the temple, doing what you're supposed to be doing, that doesn't get it. You are laboring in vain. He said, come unto me. Jesus is the way of salvation. He is the way, the truth, and the life, as Scripture tells us. We can't merit or earn salvation. You know, we come here to, and that's that rest. He says, come to me. If you if you wore yourself out, or you're burned out because you're, you know, you're, you're running trying to, to do all the things that are good around the church and in the community, you know, the get your name on a plaque somewhere that says, you know, whatever organization you might have been in, you served for 50, 60 years, you know. Those are good if they're, you know, for serving and helping other people. But it doesn't merit you salvation. Salvation is found only through Jesus. Come on to me and I will give you rest. I'll give you a, a, a sense of assurance. You know, we all come here this weekend because we don't have to go to work tomorrow. We get a chance to sleep in. We get a chance to rest. 
you know, a break from our normal routine. But the rest that Jesus is there speaking of is the confidence to know that by faith, by faith in Jesus and what he did on Calvary's cross, thereby that's where you find rest. You find peace of mind, peace of heart. You find confidence in knowing that when this world is over, whether there's two ways out, we're either going to die or we're going to fly. There's two ways out. And the way that everything is unfolding, we can hold up God's word and we can hold the newspaper in the other hand. But, wow, things are really all coming true. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn Learn from me. Well, Jesus lived a righteous and holy life. Sinless. Something that we cannot proclaim. Doesn't matter how good, you know, if you pay your taxes on time, go to, go to church every sun, uh, Sunday, and even on and you know, Wednesday night. And you don't, you know, you don't kick the neighbor's dog or, or you know, whatever. Learn from me. In other words, mimic. <coughs> Several years ago, there was this little bracelet, you know, uh, WWJD. Remember them? Mm -hmm. you know, what would Jesus do? Well, in all actuality, that, that's a good thought process. But when it comes to our salvation, we can't hang ourselves on a cross and afford our own salvation. Because Jesus did it. We don't have to do it. And what Jesus is saying, take my yoke. Take that, the, the burden that I'm going to bear for you and has bared for us. Accept it by faith and then learn from me. Not some off-the-wall, obscure novelist not some obscure movie, not some false teacher, false preacher, false prophet. Learn from him. Learn from me, Jesus says. Learn from me. Follow me. If any, follow me. And this is uh, what Luke, Dr. Luke says, chapter 9, says, and, and he, Jesus, said unto them, said unto them, all, if any take up my cross, take up his cross, daily. In other words, when you take, we reflect upon what Jesus did. And it doesn't mean that we have to take up our particular cross and, and walk around with it. It means we reflect upon and we renew what the Lord has done. We, re we renew, we reflect, and we rejoice. There's three R's. Wow. You're free to use that. You know. <laughs> renew each and every day, daily. Be in his word. Pray to the Lord. <coughs> Ask him for forgiveness if we've done something wrong. You know, a friend of mine says you keep short accounts with God. Well, it's a good deal. Keep short accounts. So reflect upon that and renew what in our hearts and in our spirit, what Jesus there provided for us at Calvary. And rejoice in the faith that we that Jesus has provided for us individually, each and every one of us, who accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then Jesus goes on to say, For I am meek and lowly in heart, you see, in, in this particular two verses, we see Jesus making a proclamation that who he is, he gives us an example how we can live that way. And now he's showing us, he says, uh, and this is, by the way, this is in scripture where Jesus, this is the only time where Jesus talked about himself as, a, as, a, as his attributes. He says, for I am meek and lowly of heart. You know, we hear, we think, oh, when someone's meek. Oh, they're timid. 
you know, they're shy. You know, they don't want to speak out. They don't want to say anything. You know, that's how we look at being meek. But when Jesus said he is meek, and the biblical definition of meekness is strength under control. You can be totally raging angry, but you still have not lost your control, have not lost what Jesus has taught you, how we are to react. And that's tough. Especially when somebody's barking something at you that you know is totally false and, and outside the will of God and outside the word of God. And we see a lot of that happening now. You know, we, we see it unfolding on, on our, on our daily lives. We see it unfolding across the news screen. We, you know, it's, it's quite evident that individuals have walked away from God. Yes, we are to not follow those patterns, but yet we're supposed to be able to share with them the truth. And when we share the truth with them, whether or not they accept it, that's their call. That's their, that's their choice. But you're called to tell them the truth. Once we've told them the truth, we're like in Ezekiel, we're the watchman on the wall. Well, if the watchman sees something coming towards the city and he just runs and goes saves himself, or if he neglects to tell the individual who has the alarm system, which was that particular time with the horns and things to, to sound the alarm, if he didn't tell them and people died, those people's blood would be on his hands. The same is true with us. If we have an opportunity and we let it slide, said this or should have said that, you know, hopefully we've planted a seed by our lives, but uh, we are to share the invitation, the same invitation that you and I receive. It says, and lowly in heart. Keep saints, you know, quiet, compassionate, you know, not, not yelling back, or getting into a, a, a fisticuffs over something that you, you shouldn't be. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Because Jesus never fought back. He never did. Even when they nailed him to the cross, it's been it's been explained that you know that, that was an execution. It was not an execution. Jesus willingly gave his life. There was no, I, I believe I, there was no fuss, no fighting back, no struggling. Because he knew what was coming. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying the, the, the hours before the cross, Jesus the man said, Lord, if there's, Father, if there's any other way, but if not, your will be Obedient to the end. Wow. He could have run off. He could have left the area. He could have went to another country. But where would that have left us? Lost forever. And in the very end, it says, Take, excuse me, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. In our chaotic, hustle-bustle world that we live in, we can get caught up in, in congestion. We can get caught up in confusion, corruption, and control. Now, there, there's four C's there, Deb. There's four C's there. Four C's. We can get caught up in that. We can become so entangled with that that it aggravates our very soul. Jesus says, you shall find rest unto your souls. You know, we can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. All understanding. Something that's totally confusing and beyond our comprehension, we just say, Lord, I'm glad that you are in control. 
whether it be a weather or whether it be a, you know, a natural disaster, God has got it under his control. Nothing catches God off guard. Or, you know, wow, God said, I didn't see that coming. That's not the case. God knows the beginning. Because in the beginning, God created the world. And God knows how it's all going to unfold at the very end. And surprisingly enough, he knows what's happening in the middle. He knew at the creation of this earth that you and I would be here this day. Isn't that something? We, we can't wrap our head around that. And it's a good thing because he's God and we're not. Though some people think they're gods. They may strut and walk around like they're God, but they're not. So with that in mind, knowing that the Lord himself said, come on to me. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. We can have that comfort to know that regardless of what happens, whether it be illness, whether it be something life-threatening, something, you know, some big catastrophe in our lives, Jesus has come to me. Come to me. Look to me. And I will give you rest. It might not unfold the way we want it to. The way he has it in plan with his will. So often, at individuals who uh, who are ill, sickness unto death, we, we pray for healing. We pray that that individual will be restored. But then, weeks or months later, that individual dies or expires. Well, we were praying for healing. But in all actuality, God answered our prayer. Because that individual who knew the Lord is now in the presence of the Lord, totally, 100% healed of anything that was going on. But yet there's that selfish part of us that we want to hang on to our loved ones. You know, we don't want to see them suffer and, and be in torment. You know, we're, we're, we're still human. We're, we want them here. So we want them to be well. Because that's, that's the way we're put together. That's the way we're wired. But still, we can find comfort in that. And knowing that if we've accepted the Lord as our Savior, we will see that loved one again. And who would not want someone who is racked with pain, disease, and illness to go through all eternity feeling 100%? That's something to look forward to. So these are the words of Jesus, a great invitation that he gives. And the invitation that I give to you this morning is probably one that you've heard before. If you've never accepted, I don't know who's listening via the, the media system that is here, but if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, I encourage you to do so. Very simple. Just ask and you shall receive. May the Lord bless each and every one of you as we go throughout this time of rest from an evil holiday. But may we go with God's will and in His way. In just one song here because he lives. It's on the uh, sheet.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to share amongst these brothers and sisters that are here this morning. Lord, as we dismiss, knowing that you are the great creator, the author of salvation, Lord, be with us, keep us, until we meet again, or until we stand in your presence, be with each and every one. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.